Hey everyone, thanks for your interest in the CDI kit here. Uh, my website's VintageHondaMinis.com. Uh, easy way, I have an eBay store, that's where I'm using or utilizing to sell some parts here. But if you go to my website, you can click on Shop Parts. Here's a direct link to the eBay store. And here's my landing page on eBay. If you just type in CDI, that will pull up the kits that I'm offering. So we got an adjustable kit right here. Click on that and you can purchase that. If you need help, you don't use eBay, you can call me. I'll produce an invoice for you and we can do a phone order or email order. Hey everyone, it's Josh, Vintage Honda Minis in Traverse City, Michigan. Uh, thanks for your support and interest in the CDI kits. This is going to be the ultimate kit you can get on the market currently for the 6-volt uh, Z50s and uh, CT70s, etc. Uh, this is what it will look like when you get your kit and unbox it. It comes with the O-rings, the stator screws, and the seal for the crank. Uh, CDI kit with the adjustable base. Uh, one other note, I made a video with a preliminary kit that had a separate ground lead with an eyelet on it. That's shown in the adjustment and install video. Since that was made, I made uh, communications with the manufacturer and we streamlined the ground so that the ground uh, cable now is fed in and grounded on the stator plate itself. So that's no longer an extra part that needs to be uh, installed or uh, you don't have to find a place to do a ground anymore. So I got the CT70 kit installed on this bike. I'll give you a link to the eBay store or my store where I sell it. And uh, let's go over kind of its functionality and adjustments and uh, use this as a real example. All right, so flywheel's installed and torque to spec. This is gonna be the initial test to see where this particular kit is firing. Uh, the variables on this are the, basically I guess how they are assembling their uh, two-piece CDI stator plate system, the strength of your old magnets on your flywheel, and um, that will give the variables involved with where this is going to fire off from the factory setting. So what we have set up here, I pulled my plug, I'm grounding it up here on a fin. Uh, two things for that, you can observe the spark if you want a visual of it, and this reduces uh, the engine's compression because now the spark plug hole is open. So you can use your drill to power the flywheel through the nut. A non-impact drill counterclockwise, that way we'll generate the spark. Um, I'm using a timing light and you wanna make sure your inductive probe is as close as possible to the um, spark boot to get the best reading. 12 volt battery source, another tip on the Timing lights is, this one is an adjustable one, so this sometimes gets hit. I just wanna make sure I'm always at zero, so we're not altering our sparking uh, information. If you have a different model, just make sure you're, you're reading at your zero uh, baseline. And uh, I've got the box hooked up that comes with the CDI. I have the strap grounded to the chassis right here, just a, um, just a basic way to do it, just for the demo purposes. And now we can go ahead and use our drill to turn it counterclockwise and start producing a spark and get an initial reading. Um, the magnets can, the reason the, uh, this adjustable kit is gonna be what I wanna carry from now on out is because uh, I have magnets that I've seen that are weak and they make the spark fire off uh, retarded, um, not optimally, and there's no adjustability. So with this kit, you're gonna be able to make some corrections based on um, your battery strength or your magnet strength on your flywheel. Uh, you can get it back to a baseline setup where the F mark's firing right at that mark on the case, or you can get a little more performance if you prefer um, with the advancing. So it's neat to be able to have an adjustment to fix an issue or tune in a little more performance. This is not a advancing, this is a static adjustment. It's not gonna advance any more than what you set it at initially. So now we're gonna pull the flywheel to make our adjustment. Got pulled the flywheel nut off. I'll use an impact drill. I hold the flywheel and use my impactor to loosen that nut and then a flywheel Polar tool. 
I have an eBay store. I'll link it in the description summary of the YouTube video. That way you can check out my store, but I sell tons of tools for working on these bikes and parts and just go ahead and check out that store. But if you need one of these, uh, you can get it on my eBay store that I'll give you the link for. These are left threaded, so you're gonna turn them on left to, to get them inserted. And then this inner stud will push up and pull off. Just gently do that. Shouldn't take much to get these flywheels loose unless you got a really rusty issue. All right, so now we have access to the plate that will make some adjustments. I'll get a better shot. There's some screws here and we can do some turning. We'll have to put the flywheel back on and, and test it, but this is how you'll get it dialed in. Now we got the flywheel off. We're gonna just look at the three screws here that are gonna be able to be loosened to let you make manipulate your timing, your firing event. So these three screws that you can see, uh, these are Japanese bikes, not necessarily these screws coming from this this, this uh, manufacturer, but you're going to want to have JIS bits, Japanese Industrial Standard bits. Those are going to be number twos and number threes on the engine. So the bigger ones over here, these bigger screws, those are JIS three. The small little guys here are going to be JIS number two bits. So go ahead and get yourself a JIS bit, loosen those up, and that's going to let you manipulate this left and right or clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, if we were say firing right here at this mark on the case, and that was where the timing light was showing your F mark firing off on, then uh, simply rotating clockwise would now, and the flywheel's turning counterclockwise on a running engine. So if it was firing here, which is this factory setting, and you wanted to advance the firing, you would rotate this plate after you loosen it, you would turn it clockwise and that would make your F mark start to move over to the right side of that hatch mark. Now, if you rotate it counterclockwise, your F mark is gonna start retarding and end up showing somewhere beyond that mark to your left, okay? Now, also when the adjustments are made, there are multiple screw threads here and this is a slot, so this only can turn so much before it locks out, before it hits the screw and then it's done. So the manufacturer has put some additional uh, thread that holes in here so you can continue to get more advancement or retardation depending on how far off you are. So what would happen is we would have to remove all three, then reposition, uh, for example, these screws would need to go into this slot here and then, or that thread there, and then same for the other two. And then that would open up even more opportunity to turn further to get that uh, correct position that you're looking for on the timing. So I've taken all three screws out so that we can expose what's behind here. And you're gonna see that there's many additional threaded holes for you to add flexibility to this kit so based on how far out of whack you are and these slots that exist you're gonna have to find out you know maybe you're lucky and you can get your adjustment by just within the parameters of how it comes pre-installed from the factory but if you can't get enough uh, movement to correct your timing uh, issue then you're gonna have to start using the other holes and getting yourself rotated further, okay? So just to circle back to our, this particular video's example, I was firing around this, I was firing advanced when I was looking on the timing light. So I'm trying to move back towards this center line here on the case at 12 o'clock. So I manipulated the screws by um, using the next set of holes because I need to be able to turn it a decent amount to bring it back that many degrees. So I turned it counterclockwise, so I'm hoping to end up 
back at this center mark on the case. All right, final adjustment, let's get our reading. Hopefully that's showing up. It's firing right, right at that line. So here's the example of it running. I like it just a little couple degrees of band. And I'll get a video of us taking it down the road under load, higher RPM. Well, there you go. It's pretty straightforward. Just takes a few uh, attempts to kind of hone in on your particular engine based on your flywheel, where that firing event wants to occur appropriately, but it's fully adjustable as shown. Uh, also sell tons of parts, guys, and uh, build engines and repair the bikes. Again, Traverse City, Michigan, vintage on the minis. Always building engines here. All right, check out that link on eBay to get yourself that adjustable CDI.